Hi guys, I'm Ellie, I'm the Learning and Skills Intern and I'm here today with Imogen who is our Biodiversity Officer. And today we're going to be talking a bit about wetlands and why they're an important habitat and we're also going to be showing you how to make a mini wetland at home. So wetland is quite a broad term for lots of different types of wet habitats so each of these types of play-doh is going to signify a different type of wetland habitat. So we've got the wet woodland. Wet woodland is mainly made of trees such as alder and willow. Um, wet grassland, which will have lots of the sort of wetland wildflower plant species. And then we've got orange, which signifies a reed bed, which is another important feature of a habitat, a wetland habitat. So we've got our sponge, which symbolises our wetland today because it shows how wetlands are supposed to absorb different things. And then we've got some different glitters, red and gold, and they, those symbolise different pollutants. So it could be fertiliser, different things like that. And we've got our tub that we're using for our mini wetland. You can use any sort of tub, but this one's quite good. I've just used an old takeaway container, but anything of this sort of size or bigger would be good. And then we've got our water, which we put a bit of mud in, and that's to show sort of water running off the land into the wetland. Right, let's get on and make our wetland habitat then. So to start off with today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to making my mini model. So I'm going to take my different habitats and I'm sort of going to mould them. Because what you want to do is put your sponge sort of in there and then this end is going to be my habitats. So what I'm doing is sort of moulding it up. So what I've done guys is I've moulded my different habitats. I've got my three habitats at this end and then my sponge which symbolises the wetland. And then I've got my body of water down here. And then what I'm going to do next is use I've got my jug of water and I'm going to add some of the pollutants, which would be things like fertiliser. So I'm putting those in, which symbolises you, you can use any colour of glitter, just whatever sort of shows up so you can sort of see it. So I'm using red and gold. So I'm just give it a good mix. And then what you do is you pour your water and your sponge should form a barrier between the water and the wetland. So any of the pollutants that are being uh, added to the wetland system here, they're all being filtered out by this wetland, so they're not getting into the main river, uh, which is great because that means that our rivers are cleaner. So you can see that it all gets stuck at the bottom of the sponge, which, like again, I say, is the wetland. So I've noticed our mini wetland, Imogen, that um, there is quite a lot of water being stored on the land. Is there a reason for that? Um, so wetlands, they do kind of act as a, as a big sponge, like the the sponge shows here and it stores water on the land in place of the river so having water stored in a floodplain or wetland area is is much better because then it's got a place to go whereas when you alter the course of rivers to make them straighter or lose their natural function they tend to just flood in our towns and cities which is obviously not good. So in your experience what are three big benefits of wetlands that you think are the most important? Well in addition to being a um, really important water source for pretty much all wildlife that relies on water. We've also got the, the filtration qualities, so filtering out sediments and nutrients in the environment, which we've shown in this, um, in this video. There are important floodplain areas, so any water that's being stored in the floodplain area is um, not flooding elsewhere, so having natural habitats that can hold large amounts of water is really good. They can also be a water source for uh, for communities as well. So there's a lot of countries um, worldwide that rely on wetlands for, for their water source. That's the only way of getting their water. So, so say if in 10, 10 years we, you know, we'd had a great reduction in wetlands, we'd be looking at lots of flooding, non-filtered water. Yeah, so species. in the last 100 years in the UK, we've lost actually 90% of our wetlands. Um, so we would have had much more expansive areas of wetlands such as uh, on the Norfolk Board, so the Somerset levels would have all been more natural wetlands now. They're, they're a more modified version and a smaller, a smaller area of wetlands. And um, we know that those areas are very vulnerable to flooding as well. So the more, that we, the more wetland habitat that we lose, the less capability the ground has to store water. If you start putting a permeable, an impermeable surface down, such as tarmac, uh, then the water just runs straight off and it loses that sponge-like um, ability. Is there any way that we can sort of help our wetlands? Is there anything we can do? So we, if we live near a watercourse, we could be really careful about what, what chemicals we're using in the surrounding environment. So fertilisers, pesticides, anything that's going into that environment is then going to run off into rivers. So, so I guess like eco-friendly Yeah, products, using eco-friendly cleaning like products. Um, could help. Reducing use of chemicals in gardens, um, things like that, and then creating better habitats within our wetland areas, within floodplain areas. 
what, what sort of species would we find in wetland generally is there anything quite common or is it really mixed um, it depends what type of environment you've got, but you've got some wetland bird species like curlew or lapwing or snipe. That they all need wetland habitat to survive, but different different types of wetland habitat. So having the variation of different types of wetland habitat is really important for different species. Uh, if it's all the same, then it will only uh, accommodate one or a few types of species. So. Uh, having so, that diversity of so it's really habitat. dependent on where it is and what diversity. Yeah, it really depends on whether yeah. it's a wet woodland or a yeah. or a reed bed. Reed beds, you get things if you have a large enough reed bed, you get things like bitterns or reed warblers or reed buntings, things like that. So, so in terms of the heart of England forest, we I know we've got a few wetland habitats. Where where are they and what are we sort of doing with them at the moment? Um, so most of the habitats in the heart of England forest are ponds or rivers. We have a few small kind of reed beddy areas. So we're looking at ways in which we can improve the quality of our ponds by managing managing them a little bit where they've become overgrown, for example, or helping filter out nutrients within the river, so improving uh, the river habitat quality. That's really interesting. Thank you, Imogen. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to send us any pictures if you do this activity at home. And join us in our next video where we talk about water and pollution. Thanks for watching. Bye.